Hi, how are you doing? And welcome to my electronic adventure number four. We're upstairs at DGHQ today because um, I've got stuff going on downstairs. It's a little bit chilly. As you can see, I've got my jacket on. What am I doing? Well, I want to demonstrate how really simply you can get some really cool things going on with an electronic drum kit and a computer. The wonderful people down at uh, Music Group or Music Tribe, as they're now known, um, Jem Atkins and Patrick Carvunis, have very kindly loaned me one of their kits. This is their, um, I guess it's the, the, the top of the Behringer range. Um, it's the XD80. Uh, it uses the HDS240 uh, USB drum module with the pads. Um, I've got it set up. It all seems pretty cool. It's sturdy and I've got it hooked up to my computer. Now the point of this is to demonstrate, as I said before, how you can use uh, an electronic drum kit. It doesn't have to be the top of the range by any stretch of the, of, of the imagination, as long as it sends MIDI data. And you can use that as a controller to play um, your computer. A lot of people are probably already doing this using Superior Drummer um, and the likes, BFD, all that kind of stuff. I want to try and show you something different. This is going to give you a really good understanding of MIDI. It's also going to add a, a, a different sound palette and layer to, to what you do, to your band, the artists that you play with, allowing you to, to jam and play with loops without the need of click tracks. And one thing it will definitely do is improve your timing, no end. What I have is the Behringer XD80 drum kit, a computer that's running Ableton Lite, a USB lead that's coming out of the computer into the HDS240 module. There's a mini jack lead for, for sound that's coming out of the computer, and I've got a stereo output coming from the, uh, the Behringer into a mixer. It's a DJ mixer, so I can have the left side and right side. At the moment, the left side is this which is the HDS240. The other side is the computer, which doesn't have any sound on it at the moment, okay? So, let's turn our attention to the computer. I've gone into the preferences, like so. If I go to MIDI in Ableton, the preferences in Ableton as well, I must add. If you go into the MIDI, down the bottom, as it's hooked up, it says input Behringer eDrum XDS XD80 USB, sorry. Make sure that track is on, okay? Just make sure that's on. And then in audio, latency, the buffer size, I drop it down to 64. You want that to be as low as possible without the sound breaking up because the CPU of the computer can't handle it. So I drop it down to 64. That way you have no latency meaning that when you play, there isn't a delay in you hitting and the sound coming out. So we're gonna shut that down. I'm now gonna go over to drums. I'm gonna grab a drum rack. I'm gonna put that drum rack on that channel. I haven't changed anything here. All I've done is put that drum rack on the channel. Now what happens when I hit the, the, uh, the kick drum now, for instance? We're still getting MIDI, it's still showing MIDI here, but nothing's happening here. So let's change the monitor to in. Now let's see what happens. Do you see down here now? I'm now looking, follow my cursor, it's in the middle of the screen. Follow it down to this bottom left hand corner now. Watch this row of dots here. When I hit the kick drum. That's saying that it's now getting MIDI information. So, that's what we've got going on. The way these two talk to each other, because of the USB lead, is MIDI. If you don't know, MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. Let me demonstrate. If I hit the snare drum, the data is going to go down this lead, into the module, and then out of the module, down the USB lead, into the computer. And it will tell the computer to play. Did you see that? In the drum rack, D1 was told to play. I'm going to do it on the kick drum now. Let's keep our eye on the drum rack and see what happens. C1 plays. So the snare drum is D1, the 
The kick drum is C1. So I want to go on the left hand side of Ableton to my sample CDs and I want to grab a break. I'm going to put that on C1. There it is. I'm now going to move the fader across on the mixer. Okay, there you go. I've moved it to the other side. Now look what happens when I now hit the kick drum. It now plays that break. So I also want to grab that break and I want to put it in D1 where the snare drum is. And now if I hit the snare drum, it plays that break. However, it's starting at the same point as the kick drum. When I hit a kick drum, I'm used to hearing a kick drum sound. When I hit the snare drum, I'm used to hearing a snare drum sound. So here's what I want to do. We go back across to Ableton. We click that break on D1, which is where the snare drum is. And we get the start point and we bring that up so it starts on that snare drum hit. Using the magnifying tool, which is just clicking and dragging, you get to the start point. Just knock it back, just fraction, there you go. It's right on the start point. So now look what happens. The kick drum, the snare drum. Great, but what happens when I play the snare drum where the snare drum is in the loop? You can hear both of them are playing. And unless you hit it smack on, it flams. But there is a way around that. Back over to the computer, the third icon down. Let's click that. It opens up more parameters within the drum rack. And down the bottom, which is now the fifth icon down, there's an I.O. tab. If we click that, it opens up yet more parameters. And one of them in there says choke. At the moment it says none. So let's go to one and change both of those cells, C1 and D1, to choke on one. We have the kick drum and the snare drum. What happens when we play them where it should be played though? All of a sudden, you're cutting into the sound. You know, and this is good. So now you can start playing the loop and don't forget you've also got the other kit. As you can see there's no click tracks. It is just me playing a kit, but all of a sudden I've got breaks and loops and sounds going on that are normally on backing tracks and on productions that you hear today. If you've got an electronic drum kit and you've got a computer, Ableton Live Lite doesn't cost you anything. A USB lead into your drum module and you're away. If you follow those simple steps, you can quite easily get this going on. And if you get this going on, I think it will open up a whole new world to you. It's awesome fun. I love it. And I think, personally, this is one of the things that electronic drum kits are designed to do. I really hope you've got something out of this. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. Um, lots of cool things going on. Lots of cool things coming up. Uh, if you're a subscriber, then as soon as new videos come up, you will get notification. You can go and watch them, um, be the first to try some of the things out that I'm going to be demonstrating and showing. And also um, getting a little look as to what it's like being out on the road uh, and touring the world uh, as an electronic drummer. Um, I hope you've really enjoyed the video. I hope you've got something out of it. And until next time, look after yourselves. I'll see you soon.